This meeting is being recorded. This is Kathleen Butler, certified SRT teacher and restructuring teacher. Today is January 14th, 2021, and this is our first SRT practitioners clearing or meeting, whatever title you want to give it, for this new year of 2021. When I uh, start the meditation, I will be sure that everyone is muted. You can always uh, mute yourself before. Uh, when you join, it should mute you automatically if you come in late. Before we start a meditation, I just wanted to do a little bit of an introduction to me. I know that Beth introduced me to uh, some people when I did uh, as a guest, as a co-host, I was in, I think, the September SRT Practitioners. And I've been teaching since uh, March 1997. I've been teaching SRT. So I've been doing SRT for hmm, 24 years, I think. So uh, I started doing SRT in 1996. and met up with Robert um, in my... Uh, in between my basic and advanced class in 97, or yeah, something like that, the early part of 97, and uh, was certified as a consultant and then a teacher. And I've served on, gosh, lots of different committees. I've chaired certification, so I understand a little bit of that. I've been the chair of the finance committee, and for five years I was the director of the SRA office itself. I've been on the board of directors before. That was before I became one of the staff as the executive director. I've um, been friends with the Detzlers as long as I've been doing SRT. I just met with Marianne this afternoon. Uh, we were working on a volunteer project together. She sends her regards and says hello. And I live here in Olympia, Washington now. I'm originally from Washington State, um, although a different part, and I moved to Phoenix, Arizona in 1985, and I came across SRT uh, um, after I tried some other modalities while I was living in Phoenix, and um, I taught there very prolifically for many years before I moved up here. I still teach, obviously, except I do a lot of travel with my teacher teaching. So some of that's been a bit on hiatus as uh, in-person meetings anyway. And of course, there are some classes I do online. So that's a little bit about me. I have a 17-year-old son. One of the things that, just to tell you a little bit of exciting things about SRT for me is uh, when I first started doing it, I was told I could never have children. So I refer to him as my SRT baby sometimes because we cleared programs and past life issues. And so he's here now and doing well. And it's been fun. It's been great. Uh, Vanilla also lives with me. He's my dog. So I work with animals. Uh, and make appointments with people to work on animals as well. So if you haven't tried doing SRT on animals, uh, branch out. You can read about it in Robert's book, Soul Recreation, and in some of old, gosh, I want to say in the 1990s, uh, maybe 98, 99, he wrote a little bit about working on animals. But you can find it in his Soul Recreation. He has a couple of pages about it. Um, in one edition, it's on, on the edition I have is page 176, but the print is a little different. You know, the print on demand, so the page numbers may not be the same because the size of the book's a little different. But you can always just find it in there. It's fun uh, working on plants and animals, the property, of course, houses. That's part of what we're going to talk about today with blocks and interferences, too, is your environment. Your environment matters. I was uh, working with someone the other day and we had blocks and interferences do the session and I could hear a lot of noise in the background that wasn't there previously. So I asked him if he was at home and he said, no, he was walking through the park. <laughs> it 
So I'm like, ah, that explains some of the blocks we were having. Not that the block park was bad, but it alerted me as to why the environment wasn't staying the same. As far as once I cleared it, it kept changing. So let's get ready for a meditation. I think a lot of people have had a chance to come in. I see that we have 27 people on the call, which is lovely. Thank you all for joining us. The meditation I have, um, I thought went well. It's short, but I also thought it went well with our discussion today. So go ahead and take a deep breath in. And release out. And take another deep breath in. And release out. And take a moment just to feel, to feel the support of the chair, to feel the support around you. Maybe the support comes above or around, and it's more than just the floor. It's more than just the chair. And breathe in. And breathe out. And take a moment to relax. And remind yourself of the following. You came again into this world, trailing light behind you, harboring the greater truth. You may believe that you've been distracted irrevocably, or you may discover that all of your life you have been following that light. Whatever your awareness at this point, there is no mistaking the fact you have come as light to transform darkness, to move, to move ultimately into the brighter remembering of the oneness that you are, the oneness with spirit and nothing gets in the way. And so it is. Amen. So this one time that was given to me by Robert and Mary Ann um, as a reminder that I was coming into more of my truth. This, I mean, we can have blocks and interferences on and off throughout our practice. It's not that you'll never have them. Hopefully, perhaps moving forward, you won't. It's more about having the skill to witness and recognize what's going on. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. One thing, when I was having difficulty, um, I'd probably been doing SRT for maybe about three or four years. And... Robert said, well, I told him I like to say that Spirit and I are one and we work as a team. I really liked that as my meditation and my intention. And he suggested that I change it to say Spirit and I are one and nothing gets in the way. And you know, it helped because intention creates, right? So when you sit down to do your work, what is your intention? We covered this a little bit with Lisa uh, Koo as we talked about setting an intention. But if you sit down to do your SRT work or, or let's say other modalities, and what if your thought is, I hope I don't get blocks and interferences, then you've just set an intention to have blocks and interferences. So being aware of your thoughts is very helpful. It's part of your energy management. Being aware of your feelings. Maybe you don't have a particular thought. You're like, well, I feel like you're, you know, everything's there, but you might feel maybe a fear. And maybe there's a belief you're unaware of. 
I find one of the more common blocks and interferences that people don't think about is their own beliefs. So let's take a moment to ask a question. If you have a pendulum, you can ask this now, working with your high self. Do you have any beliefs that are limiting you? Do you yes or no? Do you have any beliefs that are limiting you? <laughs> I got yes. <laughs> okay. I was aware of it, actually, before I even asked. Okay. If you want to know the energies of the beliefs, you could go to 6A because we're asking about it blocking you, or you can ask on what chart would I find it. Or you can simply ask, hi self, can you clear that belief without any more information? Just with in zero time is how some people say it, or without research is how some other people say it, or without more information. Is this the idea? that you don't have to research anything or to identify anything. If I believe a client is too difficult to work on, I will have blocks and interferences to working with that person. If I believe I'm unworthy of receiving or channeling, then I will block that as well. So your beliefs are an important part of who you are and your life expression. Robert often said, our beliefs can block us more than our programs. Some of you may have heard him say that. In the basic class, there's a handout called releasing statements. If you've forgotten about it or haven't used it recently, it's a really positive and powerful conscious mind tool to help you let go of things. An example of using releasing statements would be, I release all belief, perception, and judgment that I have to have blocks and interferences or that I do have blocks and interferences. I release all need and desire to believe that I have to have blocks and interferences, or that I do have blocks and interferences. I now completely accept and believe and instruct my subconscious to accept and believe on every level of my being that I'm free from blocks and interferences. My clarity comes easily and effortlessly. This pleases me. It feels good, and I like it. You can always throw in those other things. I like to always say, and it feels good, and I like it. <laughs> I like to add that to almost every releasing statement. So these are just ideas. We only have an hour, well, 45 minutes now. So of course, this isn't a full class. It's just a little bit of ideas to think about. A lot of people, when they think of blocks and interferences, they automatically think of chart five. And that's okay, because that is where a lot of them are listed. Robert once said he listed the inside of chart five according to ickiness, <laughs> which I thought was a pretty interesting word. So on the left side is simple blocks and interferences. On the, le on the right side, on the inside, are blocks and interferences that might be more challenge, feel more challenging. But remember, when it comes to discarnates or separates, you clear, remove, send them to their most right and perfect place. We all have been taught that with our SRT. Robert liked to throw in close, clear, and remove, just to make sure in case there's openings. So this, uh, this evening, as I was sitting down to work with you as a group, I asked how long to prep us as a group. And there were blocks and interferences to prepping us as a group. So I asked why, and I got openings. So openings are not always on the physical property. Sometimes people have openings in their aura, or they might have an opening in their physical body, which is kind of sort of like their auric field. I mean, the physical body does make up, uh, you have seven auric fields. Um, so when you get other on chart on the inside of chart five, 
It could be an opening to other dimensions, so you close and seal it. It doesn't always mean that entities are coming through. It could just be static, like, like calling someone on the phone and having a bad connection so you can't get the information, so you hang out and try again. That, so openings don't always bring entities, but of course they can. But they can be, uh, if, you, if it comes up, if you find a block and interference that comes up in a pattern, let's say every time you sit down to work, then you'll want to go to chart one and ask why. I asked Robert once, I said, well, is spirit, if I have blocks and interferences, will spirit tell me the truth? <laughs> if I ask why? He's like, yeah, they do. I'm like, okay. So is there a reason why there were openings? Chart five. Okay. The reason was negative motivations. So that means that the opening might start up again, right? Because there's a program or something creating it. Well, if you get negative motivations, but instead of pointing to a particular one, you just get negative motivation and your pendulum points in a straight line at those words, that means it's a negative motivation at spirit level. We don't have a name for it. It's just negative motivations at spirit level. So clearing that is going to make sure that that opening stays, well, not only does it stay sealed, but you're not going to create another one just like it. Because once you close an opening, it stays closed, but you can create more is the point. The only reason you wouldn't be able to close openings is, uh, I want to say the only, but the primary reason would be toxic streams. Think of toxic streams as a river of energy, just for a vision, a, a vision of it. And you're trying to close the door or the window against that strong energy. And you can't do it. It's like a hurricane wind. You can't close the window. So you transform. So you fill the toxic streams with light and love. Make sure that they're completely transformed. They're not going to rebuild. And then you can close and permanently seal the openings. Just, there was someone who contacted me today saying that they are having that type of problem. They can't close openings. So I wanted to share that. So they kept having interference, blocks and interferences. So toxic streams. Well, I think we all understand the items on chart five. Um, if something comes up over and over, you check why. Beliefs, perceptions, judgments, we talked about that. You know, if you get blocked in interference, neutrality is important. That's one way we block ourselves is through judgment. You're not getting correct information. Why? Maybe you have judgment on the question or judgment on the answer and you don't know it. Maybe you're working on someone else. Some of the best advice that Robert gave me, at least at the time, it felt like the best stuff and it has served me well, is don't assume that you're the problem. Don't assume that you're the one with the blocks and interferences if you're working on someone else. We just talked about property a little bit. Maybe your house had openings. Maybe the place where you're doing the SRT session has toxic streams. In your prep to work, your high self should include clearing the property where you're at during the session. So ask if your high self is including that in your prep to work, you should get yes. If you get no, ask them to get educated so that they always include your environment in your prep to work. And we often talk about when we work with someone, yes, we prep them to work so we can work on them. But remember, Robert started that new question. Well, I call it new, but it's, it's been a while. <laughs> Is the um, how long to prep you? How long to prep your high self? Well, people were being so blocked, they couldn't even do SRT. They couldn't get past being able to do the work and so they give up and we found people had blocks to being prepped so 
that is a very vital question for you, your client, your both your high selves. So don't skip that one. Some people like to skip questions. I'm telling you, don't skip that one. I just have a couple more points before I'm opening it up to discussion. Sometimes we have, uh, the client can block you, but you already check for discarnate separates. Ah, but the client can still block you through conscious control. The client can still block you out of fear. And sometimes the program that you're working on has such a strong energy that it feels like it's blocking you. That happened to me, so I asked Robert about it, and he said, oh, the program was really, had a lot of energy and it was blocking you to clearing it. So what he suggested was to clear the accumulation, the accumulated energy of the program, or to clear the reasons the program was blocking. I've also learned that if there are blocks and interferences, or maybe I just feel like something's not right, because maybe some of us can feel energy a little more sensitive. I'll check, is it me? Is it the client? Or is it something else? What's the source of the energy that I'm feeling? What's the source of the block and interference? That goes back to don't assume it's you. If you get other, is it your high self? Is it the client's high self? or something else. As you probably learned in one of your classes, guardian angels can block through simply an issue around protection. Guardian angels are about protection, that's their job. But it's not just physical protection. It's also about mental and emotional protection. So they might block due to being overprotective or maybe they made an agreement with you not to, you didn't want to look at that past life. That's actually an item on the chart. Past lives, the soul doesn't want to examine. Your high, and your guardian angels might say, oh, wait, you thought that would be too emotionally disturbing. So we need to educate them so they don't block you. So these are different types of blocks and interferences. Below chart three, people sometimes get blocked. Something that Robert and other teachers have um, recommended, and I do it not all the time, but frequently, I'll ask, do I have any blocks below chart three? Go ahead and ask, do you have any blocks below chart three? It's not just pre-human incarnations. It can be entities blocking you, energies, beings. Beings can block you at any level on chart three, but don't take it personal. It just means there's some energy and there's some reason and issue as to why those beings at that level are blocking you. And you simply clear the reasons they're blocking. You might have blocks on chart three, you might have blocks and interferences above chart three. So for a long time as part of the prep to work, people would ask, are there any blocks and interferences below chart three, on chart three, or above chart three? We've summed that up in the current prep to work where we ask, are the, can, you know, I like to reword it a little bit and say, can you give me a forever infinite guarantee that all blocks and interferences have been cleared? That works for me really well to phrase it that way. Forever infinite guarantee that everything's been cleared. Okay, so one more thing before we open it up for discussions. Some people, this goes back to beliefs but it also goes back to expectations, which are sort of like beliefs. If you've had an issue with blocks and interferences, you might get into a place where you feel a little defeated. Maybe you feel like you're just anticipating them. 
Um, how does your high self get your attention? Well, one way your high self, and you can answer that in a moment. One way your high self gets your attention is by making your pendulum get wonky, get your attention through a block or an interference. So remember blocks and interferences have their divine order and timing as well. It stops something and gets you moving in a different direction of questions. They block you because it's like, oh, Kathleen, you need to go back and look at this. Some people believe that their high self is trying to stop them. <laughs> I, and I'm not saying it wouldn't feel that way sometimes. But remember, your high self is your friend. It's here to help guide and direct you. And most of you have an aspect of spirit working as your high self. So spirit is love. God is love. They're here to help guide and direct you. Work on that communication with them, just as you would with any friend. Fine tune that communication by asking, well, are you showing me this word or are you showing me that word? Because sometimes a block and interference, you can't tell which word they're pointing to. So tell them to clarify it. Ask them to be accountable to what they're pointing to. So that fine tunes your communication Sometimes the blocks and interferences is your own doubt. So ask them to just show you again. Oh, well, show me again. What are you pointing at? And instead of a block and interference, you're developing a conversation. So let's open up the discussion uh, either in the chat box or unmute yourself to ask a question or to let me know what kind of blocks and interferences do you want us to discuss? And if you have any questions about what I've mentioned as just your typical type of blocks and interferences. Oh, Maria uh, has a question about toxic streams. Uh, have you taken the advanced class, Maria? Okay, so I'm gonna go with it from here. On chart 10A, which for some students, they don't get until the advanced class. So toxic stream is an item on chart 10A. It is not a person, it is the planet. The planet Earth has a magnetic field and there are lines. Some people call these ley lines. Okay, thanks Maria. Um, a lot of people, I mean, I would think it would be impossible to remember everything that you've been taught in one class. That's why retaking a class is so helpful. You can also read about toxic streams in the book Soul Recreation in the English edition where all the chapters are there. And so with toxic streams, what happens is they create negative energies and it makes you sick. Animals get sick, people get sick, plants may not grow. So if there's a toxic stream, how does that get created or how is that made? Geopathic, it's geo meaning earth, pathic meaning pathetic. So they're weak lines or weak energies in the earth. So seismic activity is real uh, normal to create that. Um, if you live in an area where there's a lot of seismic activity such as Hawaii or um, well, there's lots of places, actually. I'm just thinking of Hawaii because they're volcanic in nature, the whole islands. So you would just check, you could check this uh, every day or once a week, but you feel, you fill in, oh yeah, in Chile. So you fill in the toxic stream with light and love. You fill it up, you're like you're filling in that toxic stream with light and love and you're filling it in so much that you're transforming it. There's no negativity left. You're replacing the negative energy with positive energy. You're transforming it. So you cannot clear a toxic stream. You can only transform it. And once you transform it, you want to ask, will it rebuild? If you get no, then you're set to go. But keep in mind the earth has to move, it has to change. It's a living thing as well. So toxic streams may happen again in your home or workplace or wherever. 
but that doesn't mean it's the same one. It just means there's something else to check. It has come up as some of the primary reasons for someone to be ill. Their home had toxic streams. It wasn't a program. We cleared programs. Actually, that came up yesterday for a client. Anything, what else was causing health issues? Toxic streams. So we worked on filling those in with light and love. Okay, anything else about blocks and interferences or questions about what we discussed? I can always go on if no one. Yes, Rose. Unmute yourself, please. Uh, it's sticking. Oh, there we go. Is it? Uh, can you hear me now? I can. Nope, now I can't. It went away. Ah. Oh, there we go. Stay right there and talk. Don't move your head. <laughs> okay. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, something, something like alarm bells went off in my head when you said the sentence, so if you're feeling defeated or if a client is feeling defeated, you know, in a situation where it feels like this, this has been cleared before and before and, you know, like a like, a long period in a person's life when it's, it, it's like when you're swimming in the ocean and you get knocked over by a wave and before you can recover, the next wave comes. Right. That kind of situation. Is that, can you say anything about that? I can. Thank you for bringing that up. A lot of times when people are doing a session and they see the same item coming up and they're like, especially self-punishment or something, and they're like, well, I thought we cleared that. First of all, it didn't rebuild. So change that belief system. It didn't rebuild. What you're finding is there's more layers or it's a different kind. If you went to chart three, you'd probably find that that same program with the same name is at a different level on chart three or it's a different level. So one thing you can do is if something comes up a couple of times, I do it, like even if it comes up two sessions in a row, I'll ask myself, can you give me a forever infinite guarantee that all of that has been cleared? That's different than asking what percent. I'm asking for a forever infinite guarantee that you've cleared everything with, let's say, self-punishment. I can also go to chart one, which is what I often do, and ask, is there a reason why this energy keeps coming up? And sometimes they'll just take me back to the energy. <laughs> and I'll say, okay, there's just more of it. Yeah. So when I first started learning SRT on 6A, I would get taken back to a word over and over. And when I asked Robert about it, he said it was because the client had it times six times or it was like a whole bunch, excessive, all right? So they may not show it to you that way, but if an energy comes up again, always verify that it's completely cleared. Ask if there's any other reason for that particular item to come up again. You're just really fine tuning to make sure that they can give you a guarantee. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, too many people think it's rebuilding and that belief keeps them from finding the solution to more, the fact that there was just more. And remember, the client's in charge of their healing process, right? So they may not want it to clear it all in, at once, but we can always educate their soul and see if they'll release it. And I have some comments here that I'm going to go to. I have another part of that. Should I wait? Yes, just a moment. So someone was asking about loyalty programs from ancestors. I'm assuming you're asking, is that a reason something would come up again? And I'm gonna say no, I get no. If someone does have a loyalty program, it's usually to soul family. It could be ancestors, but what that translates in my mind is you have blocks and interferences from your ancestors. Or you can be blo have blocks and interferences from your soul family, and sometimes they're both, right? Because you have soul family and your ancestors. 
So be sure that you clear any programs to get blocked by your ancestors or soul family, if that's coming up. And then, uh, Rose, what was the second part of your question? Well, the situation is like, I can think of a few people, like, is this, as one person said, are these things in my life because I need to learn them and I just need to outlast the rough situation? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, like, like Vivaldi wrote great music, but he had a terrific medical problem that dogged him his whole life. And it, are there times when somebody that's just part of what a soul's got to learn in that lifetime and not something to clear? Well, keep in mind, when does your free will start? Your free will starts before you're born. So why did you pick that challenge? Why did you pick those experiences? We can go back to there. But the, let's go back to what's the purpose of incarnation, enlightenment, learning and growing. A lot of people say, well, why should I clear programs? Aren't I here to learn? You're not here to suffer. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that belief. You're not here to suffer. You're not here to be punished. You're not here for lack. But what we're finding, and what you may be finding, Rose, with your clients, is that those ones that feel defeated are unwilling, well, I won't say they're unwilling, they've had challenges letting go of the programs that they've already learned it. So this is really what happens, is you get an A plus, you learned it, awesome. But then you incarnate again and go, um, I think I want to do that again because there's just this little thing I think I should tweak. And then you're boom, back in it. So how do we create programs is through judgment. And a lot of that is self-judgment. We don't feel we're worthy to let go of it. So keep this in mind. All of you have gotten A pluses, but you're still not believing that you can let go of the whatever struggle it is or the work. So instead of thinking of it as struggle, think of it as, as work. You're working. You're here for enlightenment. And yes, we can have challenges in life. And sometimes we're here to learn not to be reactive. Mm -hmm. And we're also here to learn to clear our programs. So I hope that helps that question. Thank you. Uh huh. And then just a moment. Um, well, yeah, that's the point, Karen, is that uh, programs can have its roots. She's saying maybe the reason they're repeating is a copy or it has its roots in past lives. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Programs often have, I think over 90% of what's going on for us is in, or more, has its roots in past lives. And um, that we can have copies, but that's why I would say go back to a forever infinite guarantee that things are cleared. Uh, looking here at some more questions. By clearing the programs, we're not preventing the learning. That is true, but teaching our soul that we can learn with grace and ease, right? That's a beautiful way to say it. I would also say this. Think of SRT as here's this person and they went to walk their path and there's these huge boulders in front of them and little boulders, but there's like this avalanche of rocks. They cannot walk their path. So with SRT, we remove those boulders. We get rid of those boulders. We get rid of those rocks, but the person still needs to walk their path. But now it will be easier because the road is open to them. The program's not keeping them from achieving what they've come to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We cannot, so high self spirit, they don't take away your free will, but they help you manifest it so that you make choices that support you in ways that you truly wanted to come and do, right? You truly wanted to come and overcome things. You wanted to enjoy because you are here to have joy. Remember that too. Now, is there a reason for health challenges or other challenges? Yes. And so sometimes you have to be persistent and ask spirit, why are you still having the challenge? Is there any other reason for the challenge? Don't think your work is ineffective. I mean, it is possible it could be that would be if there were blocks and interferences of a certain magnitude. 
But <clears throat> even with certain blocks, you can still work through that, do some clearing. So it's just about um, believing in yourself. Remember, your beliefs can block you more. If you believe you can overcome all things, what will happen? <laughs> yeah, then you will emotionally overcome those things and perhaps even more. As a spiritual being, you cannot misuse your power. You're learning and growing. There is no right. There is no wrong. That's also part of the suffering. There's a right and a wrong. No, there's just learning. We've learned that we don't like some things like suffering. We want to do something different. And of course, Marianne used a great analogy this once. Um, she says, remember, you're on a planet and you're driving your car, okay? But there's other drivers on the road. So you have to learn to be defensive driver. So that's also part of don't be reactive. You're not the only one on the planet. So that, that comes together, right? We learn together. Hopefully, we surround ourselves with people that bring the best out in us. Any other questions about, well, I'll take any question, but blocks and interferences. Are you having any blocks and interferences that you want to write about or ask about? Do you feel like you can sit down and work on yourself? Mm. Have you ever checked what percent you're open to working on yourself? Why don't you check what percent are you open and willing to accurately work on yourself? Okay, so um, the question is, that is what someone feels is their block, is that they feel like they can't work on themselves or on their practice. So first, do you have any blocks to working on yourself? That can also go back to what percent positive energy do you hold on yourself? What percent negative? Kind of like some basic concepts there that we don't always think about. <laughs> okay. If you got less than 100% to working on yourself, ask your high self and spirit to clear that. I doubt you need to research it, but it's possible. Usually it's just cleared up. <clears throat> it's usually a judgment. The other thing is when you're sitting down to work on yourself and others, remember your neutrality. 17 times 3, I'm going to type it here in the chat box. It's a power code for neutrality. So it's really helpful to remember that. <clears throat> you can also simply say, hey, spirit, put me in a neutral zone. <coughs> Clear any blocks to being neutral. So that's one thing. It's hard to work on yourself and others if you're not neutral. <clears throat> now, someone said they had blocks to doing their practice. What percent positive energy do you have on SRT? What percent negative energy do you have on SRT? If it's not 100% positive and zero negative, you will most likely have blocks to doing the work. <clears throat> what percent positive energy do you have on using a pendulum? What percent negative energy do you have on using a pendulum? And um, Tanya, let me see. Not Tanya, excuse me. Um, hold on. Going back up here on some notes. Okay, it is. It was Tori. Tori, um, check. Be sure you check what percent positive energy on using the pendulum and 
also negative. I clear these with my students in the basic class because it will get in the way of them doing SRT. Okay, so Sage says she's also blocked to going further into your practice. So let's take this with the SRT method. I'm gonna to go to chart one and I'm gonna ask why is, does she feel blocked? Now remember your feelings are always accurate. So I'm not gonna say why am I blocked to going further because maybe I'm not. Why do I feel like I'm blocked to going further into my work? And what came up was chart five. Um, Sage, I'm checking that for you. And I get negative motivations. They gave me a couple of negative motivations to look at. I asked if they could clear it without research. I got yes. So then you'd want to go back to chart one. Is there any other reason why I feel blocked to doing my work? I think it's important to also check what percent positive energy do you have on working with others? I think that might be the trick to Kathleen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty important. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so, um, because a lot of you are saying you feel sluggish, sometimes your work feels a little lazy. Um, that you don't get very quickly through things. <clears throat> so for sometimes if it feels lazy, a lot of times that's conscious control, not just yours, but the client. So I'm gonna go back to chart one. Is there another reason, or is there a reason why this person feels that their practice is lazy? Yeah, they didn't take me to conscious control, but they are taking me to 6A. Low self-esteem. Low self-esteem means you're settling for less. You don't believe you're worthy of more. You'll take the burnt toast, which means the really slow session. If something's moving slowly, I tell one, I tell spirit to speed it up. I tell them to clear the reasons why it's going slowly. Remember, you're working as a team. You don't have to sit there and look at your pendulum and just because it's moving slow, you have to put up with that. Just because you're getting blocks, you don't have to put up with that. Do you see what I'm saying? You're putting up with it because you've not told high self that doesn't work for you. That's not a good thing. You know, I don't like that. If it's the client that's blocking you, then you need to educate everyone's high selves and perhaps the client's soul as well as your own to say, hey, a releasing statement might be good, but you can just say, hey, clear the reasons why it's moving slowly. A couple of times, uh, different, different reasons, I would, add, I would tell Robert, well, it's moving, it's taking forever to clear this program. He says, tell him to get some help, to get it cleared up. That they don't have time and space, but you do. You don't have three days. They need to get help, they need to get it cleared up, they need to make it quick and concise, and make that your intention. As you make that your intention, your work becomes more concise and streamlined. Okay, so what if you get that it's not 100% that you can work with? I'm not sure if that was self or others, or using a pendulum, they just said, what if it's not 100%? Then you ask your high self, can they clear the reasons it's not at 100% if you, and you get yes. Can they clear it without any more information? They can just take care of it. If you get, you do need something else, then go to chart one. What percent do you trust your intuition? How many times do you not accept answers because you're like, eh, I'm not sure that can't be it. Okay. Sometimes people feel really physically drained after they do the work. One reason, I'm not saying this is true for all the time, but one reason is you're using your head too much. You're using your ego too much. It's fatiguing you. You're not turning the session over to spirit. 
enough. So turn it over to spirit. Remember, you don't need to know a thing. You just have to ask questions. I don't need to know why my client has the problem. I need to ask spirit, is there a reason why my client has this problem? Is there a reason why I have this problem? So there's a part of you that might be afraid that this client won't like what you come up with, or you might be afraid of seeing the information for yourself. That's kind of what you're looking at. So just say, oh, you know what? What I already know about myself is worse than what's hiding. That's usually true. <laughs> so let it go, as they say with that, in that song. Is um, you can check what when you do a session, what percent are you engaging your head too much, your conscious mind? Now it should be high self as your source, not conscious mind. One practice that Robert often would uh, mention in class is, and this is uh, based on a book by Jenny King. I'll type that in here. Jenny King called the Pata Tapes. I'm not sure if I'm writing that right. Pata Tapes. So Jenny King wrote a, a, several books and they're channeled from the Godhead. So in the Pata Tapes, the advice is take your head off, put it under your armpit. Now, some people think that get freaked out because of past life stuff, you know, uh, try not to get reactive, but you will be amazed at how neutral that helps you feel. Take your head off and put it to the side and you're channeling spirit. You're getting your own head out of the way. A lot of people get their head in the way and they're not channeling myself. They're channeling their own belief system. I'm not saying that's you. I'm just saying that is also. And you're laughing. So I hope that that you can see that that actually felt different, didn't it? Take your head off. It feels different. I love that. Okay. I want to make sure I'm getting everyone's questions as we're coming to an end. Okay, we answered that one. Oh, and I'm glad some of you are saying that you're feeling the difference. That's good. Oh, I think I got everyone's comments that were typed up. Do you feel more neutral? Do you feel more in control of the session? You're not really, when I say in control, I mean grounded in it, focused. Do you feel like you can move forward with more clarity working on yourself? Remember at any time that there's a block or interference, you can ask spirit why, or you can simply clear it if you don't need to know why. Give up the need to know why. Sometimes knowing why just gets your head engaged, right? Do you really need to know? Maybe. Maybe you do, but I asked, can you just clear it without any more information? Then I don't need to know. I could always go back and ask, would it help me to know? If I get yes, and I, which I did, okay, what is it? Chart five. An imprint of brain damage, thank you. That is a really common block and in interference. It's on the inside of chart five. So what does that mean? That means there's something wrong with me. I can't do this. I, don't, I wasn't born with the right clarity. I wasn't born with the right tools. That's the type of message imprint of brain damage is. It means there's something physically wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. And it's because I wasn't born like other people. Well, that isolates you for one thing, but two, it's not true. Everyone has the ability to channel. The clarity depends on our belief system sometimes, but other, but your intention. So you sometimes have a block and interference. I once had my high self have an imprint that I had to clear. It was blocking information. 
that was a long time ago, but just a note that high selves can, um, you know, all beings are learning and growing. Spirit is assimilating changes, hopefully as faster than we can bring them up, right? So another block and in interference is sometimes people forget that once you get into the Godhead, you don't need guides, their middle management. So they start at spirit status, just like guardian angels do. But unlike a guardian angel that can serve in any level above spirit status, your guide stops right below the Godhead on chart three, um, around the right below Supreme Council and around the 2000th IM level. So it's in the IM levels. So their job is to show you the way and then say, bye, I need to go help someone else get here. There's other people you're going to work with. They're great. And if you don't let go of them, then you're creating a block and interference for yourself. So just information that sometimes if a guide comes up, check if there's one hiding or if, they're, if they have a guide. Because if their level of consciousness is in the Godhead, it is a block and interference. And I had one student who had a lot of blocks and interferences, and it ended up being a guide like that that was hiding. We're coming to a close for our meeting today. You had some great questions. I really enjoyed your energy. I've enjoyed you participating. And some of you stayed up so late to make the call. Oh, gonna, I don't even know if I could say late. It's like early morning. So uh, thank you for that diligence. And uh, you're welcome, everyone. We're going to just have a short closing prayer. And if there's a question that I didn't answer, um, I'll, I sometimes take emails. You can email me and I can answer it. But just know that it may end up being a session depending on what the challenges are. But I would let you know that. And here's my email. You can also email and ask me about, you know, who's going to be next month. Shaki Wilson, one of our first uh, certified teachers, will be our host. She's been a teacher since, I think, 1991 or 92. So um, I've only been a teacher since 97. So uh, she's been around. She lives in California. Lovely lady. She'll be our guest next month. So let's take a deep breath in. And breathe out. And take another deep breath in. And breathe out. And allow that inner peace to spread. Focus on the area around your navel and your solar plexus little bit below, around your navel. Breathing in, breathing out. Allow inner peace to spread everywhere. You are one with spirit. You are one with spirit. And you work as a team in harmony and cooperation and love. And nothing gets in the way of that clarity. And so it is, amen. <laughs>